This is Rock and Roll English. Real people, real English. Here's your host, Martin Johnston. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Rock and Roll English. Episode number 92. Oh yeah, we are getting closer and closer to the 100 mark. In today's show, I speak to Boom Boom Cannon about the Tube in London. So when I say the Tube, I mean the London Underground because Boom Boom worked for Transport for London as he mentions a few times in the podcast. So I thought, what a great person to give us some real inside knowledge of the London Underground. And he also lived in London for 10 years. Two of those years was with me, actually, if you're interested. So obviously he's a bit more qualified to talk about London than me. But I have some qualifications to talk about London. Um, Anyway, obviously I like to joke around on this show a lot. But I can be serious sometimes. And now is one of those moments. Because one of the dear rockers and rollers, Leticia, who is part of the transcript team, is a big part of the Rock and Roll English family group that we have on Facebook as she helps me a lot with the transcripts and is someone very important to Rock and Roll English. Um, She has had some very bad news recently because her nephew unfortunately passed away. He was only three years old. So I would like to dedicate this podcast to him. So Francisco, this podcast is for you. Um, I hope everyone enjoys the podcast and I hope everyone learns something from the podcast because as we know, Life is very short and precious, so we need to rock this whilst we can, people. Anyway, happy listening. Boom Boom Cannon, how are you today? I'm good, Martin. How are you? All the better now you are on the show. Um, So how is life in Sweden still not paying that 51% tax? Yeah, life's good, you know, still not paying the tax, so so I'm happy. Okay, sounds great. Let us know maybe when you start paying the tax. I will, yeah, absolutely. I'll keep you updated on that one. Okay, we cannot wait to hear about that. Um, So, Boom Boom, do you know how we normally start the show on Rock and Roll English? I've forgotten the last couple of weeks, but do you know how we normally start the show? Uh, I think, is it with a review? Oh, yeah, baby. And do you think we have a review? Well, I'd imagine we do. (laughs) Yeah, obviously, because otherwise I probably wouldn't be mentioning this. Um, I'm normally a bit worried about um, using the names here because my pronunciation is normally quite shit. But I'm feeling confident today. It's an Italian name. I feel at home with this. So I'm going to go for it. Okay, it's from Ida Ambrosio and... I hope that was right. You can, you can still be a bit overconfident, can't you, Boom Boom? Yeah, well, your Italian's better than mine. So, uh, yeah, let's go with it. Let's go with it, okay? Um, and it says, Rock and Roll English is an incredible solution for everybody who wants to become confident while speaking and sound more natural. Rock and roll, baby. Oh, yeah. Wow. That's, I mean, that's a great review. I was kind of hoping I might get a mention in that review. You know, a bit of uh, Boom Boom Cannon was great on the last pod, that sort of thing. <laughs> There's a long way to go before that, okay? But just keep trying, keep plugging away. Oh, some rock and roll vocabulary straight away. What does that mean, boom, boom? Plugging away, I think it, it, it just means, yeah, keep trying your best. Keep trying, that's all we can... I think we said it last time you were on as well. All we can ask from you, boom, boom, is you try your best, Absolutely. okay? Um, remember though, everyone, you can leave reviews on Facebook as well. Now it's very easy because iTunes can be a bit of a bastard to leave reviews. So just go Facebook and you can leave a review. Even you can leave one, Canon, because I've said it once and I'll say it again. Fake reviews are fine. Okay. <laughs> I'll, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, maybe I'll do that and, uh, maybe, yeah, give myself a bit of a compliment. <laughs> go for it go for it go free just make sure it's five stars okay if if we're having fake reviews we at least want five star five fake stars reviews. only uh, it would be quite annoying if uh, you got a sort of a two star review from me wouldn't it oh that, that that would be quite annoying yeah you're right um anyway boom boom do you know what today's show is about uh no i don't martin oh yeah i've kept you in the dark <sighs> Some rock and roll vocabulary there means I haven't told him. Um, It's a subject I know you know a lot about, very passionate about, okay? We are talking about the London Underground. Oh, yeah. One of my uh, my favourite topics. That's just such a sort of rock and roll guy that Boom Boom is. He loves the London Underground, okay? 
that's just amazing. Thanks for that, Boom Boom. Also because he worked for Transport for London, didn't you? Yeah, I did indeed. Uh, spent a few years working working for Transport for London. So yeah, buses, tubes, uh, bikes, you name it. Oh yeah, I love oh, it. Oh yeah. The full Monty, um, which is a stupid way to say everything, basically. Um, yeah, I noticed, though, the service probably, I think, went down a little bit when you were working. Is that is that true? Uh, um, yeah, but nothing to do with me, of course. <laughs> sure, because everyone abroad, well, I mean, I say abroad. When I say abroad, I mean in Italy, because they're the only people that I really know that are not from England, think it works absolutely perfectly. But you know, is that always the case, Boom Boom? Well, I mean, if, if the listeners think that, Martin, I don't really want to be the one to uh, <laughs> to make them think otherwise. He's, he's sticking up for his old employers there. So when I say sticking up, what do I mean there, Boom Boom? It means defending, defending them. Sure. That is why we call him Reliable Russ. Um, so I've got some facts here about the London Underground and then some other stupid facts. And I thought we could just have a chat about that. Can you handle that, Boom Boom? Oh, I, th- I think I can handle that. Yeah, let's see. <laughs> well, as I said before, just do your best. OK, just do your best. Will That's do. all we can ask. So 4.8 million journeys are made every day on the tube. There's one for you. Wow. Wow. That's, that's that's a lot of journeys. It's a, it's a big number, big number. Only 45% of the London underground is actually underground. Oh, my God. Good so fact. we call it the underground. It's nearly the overground, really, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that's correct, Martin. Just 45% is underground. But uh, when are we going to get to the more interesting facts? <laughs> Don't worry, we're getting there now. Notice, though, he said there, when are we going to get? So some nice connected speech there, boom, boom. Oh, yeah. Um, so we're on the interesting stuff now, actually. Apparently, Queen Elizabeth was the first monarch to take the tube. These were the, on the interesting facts. And I thought to myself, <laughs> is that an interesting fact? Mm, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I hope they get a bit better from here. Well, I thought as well, what are we supposed to say to that? Well done for doing something (laughs) that the public do every single day. Like, yeah, well done, Liz. You've got the tube. Yeah. Well, well done, Liz. That's fantastic. I really feel like you're just a normal person now (laughs) because one time, apparently in 1964, you took the tube. (laughs) Just one of the people. Exactly. Just like she could live next door to you, couldn't she? Really, the girl next door, as we say in English, because she took the tube what fifty years ago. So thanks for that, Liz. Um, So another fact: apparently, the circle line. So what happens on the circle line? Boom, boom. The circle line just it goes around in one big loop. It's the yellow line. You might be familiar with it. Oh yeah, familiar. Big big circle as well. If you want big loop, big circle, whatever you want. Um, apparently, when it was made in 1884, it was described as a torture. And they said only people that want to be tortured will take that. So I thought, you know, other forms of torture. And I thought <laughs> I would ask you which you would prefer, OK? Go for it. So one form would be to someone to sort of tie you up. So if someone ties you up, it means you can't move. Okay. And maybe like cut your penis with um, some scissors. Right. Not all of it, just a little bit, okay. just to torture you. Is this is this your torture ideas or have you got these from somewhere else? <laughs> no, this this was mine. This okay. was mine. Okay. Um or go on the circle line. Which which would you prefer? Um I will go I say stay off the penis. Uh leave the penis alone. I'll take the circle line. Thanks very much. Good choice. Good choice. Okay, so whoever invented that form of torture really needs to consider what torture actually is. I mean, it's admittedly, it's not fun going round and round in a circle, but there are many more forms of torture. Yeah, and I, we should probably also point out that you don't have to go round and round in a circle. You normally get, get on, get off before you've done a whole circle. Otherwise, you're just back to where you started. Well, exactly. Notice there when he said get on, get off. That's what we use for transport. It's strange. We use that for trains, get on, get off. For the car, what do we say for the car, boom, boom? Uh, Get in, get out. Oh, yeah, that fucking get, hey? It's always causing problems. Um, So I thought now we could talk about the waiting times because this causes a lot of problems on the tube, doesn't it? It does. You look up, you see two minutes and you think, "Mm, okay, I'm happy. You see three minutes and you think, eh. Okay, I'll take that, you know. I won't complain, I won't moan. A moan, remember, means complain. You see four minutes, what happens there, boom, boom. For, you know, you probably just get out of that station. (laughs) Take the bus. Take the bus, like, fucking hell, four minutes. What am I going to do? 
for four minutes. It's just crazy. Just say, I can't live. If it's anything like five, six, seven, just forget it. Oh, forget it. It just... No, yeah, nothing makes you more angry than that. A sort of five minutes plus, my, my blood is boiling. Oh. <laughs> Absolutely, I am with you. So rock and roll vocabulary there, then my blood is boiling. Meaning's probably quite obvious, but it just means you're very angry. It's very strange as well, really, isn't it? Because if you see a normal train and you see five minutes, you probably think, oh, fuck, I better hurry up here to get that train. There's only five minutes. <laughs> exactly, yeah, five minutes, you've done well. You know, no time, no time at all, really. On the tube, though, fucking hell, just waiting for five minutes. No Nothing worse in the world. I would prefer someone to cut my penis, <laughs> I think. Yeah. The, yeah. That's torture. That's torture. <laughs> I mean, yeah, if we, if, I'd say 10 minutes plus for me, I'd rather cut the penis, definitely. <laughs> Uh, and as well, actually, I don't know this because I haven't really taken the tube that much recently. But do phones work underground now? They do. There is now Wi-Fi across most of the London <sighs> Underground network. Oh, wow. This is the advantage of having an ex-Transport for London employee on the podcast. Unbelievable. <laughs> Wi-Fi. I'm sure that doesn't work, though. It must be the slowest Wi-Fi in the world. It, it can be unreliable. <laughs> um, yeah. Well unreliable lucky though we've got reliable russ on the pod okay we've taken him from transport for london okay it's like a big transfer it was like when neymar left barcelona yeah to go to paris saint germain yeah the yeah. The, the wages i'm being paid aren't quite as <laughs> on the sort of neymar level but yeah good point good point um so the next thing is the things that people leave on the tube um, I had a look. There's some normal stuff like phones. You can understand that. Jackets, for example. I once left a jacket on the tube. So if anyone sees a nice lightweight Zara jacket, perfect for autumn, springtime, um, black, lost around 2013, <laughs> please let me know because I still think about that jacket every day. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that one's a long shot, Martin. Yeah. Oh, some nice rock and roll vocabulary there. A long shot, something that's not likely to happen. Um, but there were some more stranger items that I thought we could talk about. And one was some ashes. Um, so what are ashes, Boom Boom? Ashes. Uh, so that would be uh, something when something's been burnt, it leaves ashes. So often, um, you know, if someone um, someone's cremated, I've been cremated after they've died, then they what will be left over are their ashes. Sure, exactly. This... I mean, as crazy as it sounds, I can still at least understand because, you know, it's quite a small thing that you keep the ashes in. Still a bit strange, though. You have the funeral, like you think, OK, we, we need to get on the tube. We can't get a taxi or something. You know, we're not the Queen. Well, maybe they actually took inspiration from the Queen. They thought if she takes the yeah. tube, we will take the tube after this funeral. Everyone's upset. You think, oh, fuck, we've left him on the tube. You know, that that is terrible. But it's not as strange as this. Is someone left a coffin? on the tube wow. so a coffin is like when the body you don't burn the body let's say the whole body in a box let's say quite a big box normally isn't it yeah it'd be a difficult one to to get onto the tube i'd say <laughs> yeah exactly and it's a difficult thing to forget really isn't it a thing that's probably bigger than you you think oh okay that's it now this is my stop i'm getting off yeah like, oh, you know fuck, yeah I'm... check you know phone <laughs> wallet keys got <laughs> coffin shit i've left it i knew i'd forgotten Fuck, something <laughs> i don't know as well if then someone tried to steal the the coffin i don't know someone obviously handed it in so if they handed it in they gave it to like the authorities and said look someone's just left this on the tubes the coffin yeah you know, take it maybe maybe the person that died um was also a big fan of the london underground like i am and that was their kind of you know their wish to be left on the underground Good point. Good point. Could be. Or maybe they waited more than 10 minutes and then just died. I don't know. <laughs> Perhaps. <laughs> that could be what happened. I also, <laughs> also think that's possible. Um, so another one, someone left a sword on a tube. I, was, I remember you telling us about the knives from Ikea. Have you ever left them on the tube or anything like that? No, I haven't left them on a the tube. I did uh, actually accidentally try and take some knives through airport security once in my hand luggage. That, that caused quite a, quite a scene. Um, but no, not on the London Underground. <laughs> Nice. Uh, notice some, he said they caused a scene, like caused a lot of problems, let's say. You and those knives, though, Boom Boom. Oh, I just, I said, I'm just getting into all sorts of trouble with those knives. Well, yeah, it's a good job you're in Sweden, <laughs> far away from me, okay? So when I say it's a good job, I mean it's lucky that you're in Sweden, because with those knives, maybe he's not so reliable. Who knows what he's going to risky. do? Risky, risky Russell. 
Risky Russell. Oh, that's a bit more edgy, isn't it? As a yeah. as a nickname. Yeah, yeah, maybe 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 we should rethink my nickname. No, I think I prefer Reliable <laughs> Russ. Actually, <laughs> um, so another thing. As of the thirty first of May two thousand and eight, there is no boozing allowed on the tube. So what do I mean when I say boozing? Uh, it means not to boozing means to drink alcohol. So we're not allowed to drink alcohol on the underground anymore. Exactly. Um, and, you know, they enforce this law so it's sort of safer and less horrible, let's say, on the tube. Yep. And to sort of celebrate this, though, I don't know whether that's the right word, celebrate, there was a massive party on the tube. Yeah. Um, and four tube drivers, other staff members, were all assaulted, which is great. What does it mean, assaulted? Assaulted means to um, either, either kind of physically or, or verbally, so... Um... <laughs> Yeah, physically or verbally kind of hurt someone, basically, yeah, to, to exactly. beat them up or to insult them. Exactly. Nice rock and roll vocabulary. To beat someone up is to physically hurt someone. So people were physically hurt because everyone just went and got shit face. <laughs> Typical British culture, really. Think, OK, we can't drink anymore on the tube. Instead of just saying, OK, that's fair enough. Everyone thought, well, you know, let's go and just get shit faced one last time on the tube and just keep dr- go on the circle line. Just keep going round and round. Exactly. I, I, I think it was on the circle line. You know, so if there's one thing that line is good for it's just getting shit faced and not really having to travel too far exactly because otherwise you 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 go on one line you end up in the fucking other part of london so good choice with the circle line but i actually found an article from the time and apparently a london banker matt win 43 said i've come along with a bottle of champagne because i want to show that you can drink responsibly on the tube and not cause trouble so thanks for that, Matt. Um, but Peter Moore, 35, from Brighton, took a slightly different approach. Um, he said that he downed three cans of beer in a minute. Um, so what does it mean if you down something? It means to drink uh, all of the can of beer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, extremely fast. I just think three cans of beer in one minute is quite a lot. And then he said, I'm going to keep drinking until I vomit. Okay, so thank you, Peter. Um, That was very nice of you to come along to the party. Nice to think as well, his objective, his goal of the evening is to vomit. (laughs) Thanks, Pete. Yeah, um, just just a a really good example of kind of British uh, culture there. It's just, uh, just how we do it. Yeah, exactly. Just thought, I really want to go to this party, like cultured event and down three cans of beer (laughs) in a minute until I vomit. Okay, so thank you very much, Peter. Some of the tube stations as well are named after pubs. Um, Elephant and Castle being one, Angel, Swiss, Swiss Cottage. So again, thinking whoever named them, think what can we call this station? Or oh, I don't know. There's a good pub down the road, isn't there? Why don't we just? I think they just they probably they they built the station, got a bit bored, looked around. What do we name it after? There's a pub. That that will do. <laughs> exactly. Some of the pub names actually in London are quite enjoyable. For example, the one at Islington Station, I believe, called the Famous Cock. Yep, that's right, Mar- Martin. I've drunk uh, drunk from the, or rather, at the Famous Cock on numerous <laughs> occasions. Yeah, saying I drank from the Famous Cock does sound a bit bad. Sounds like someone... I don't know, maybe you could get a glass in the shape of a cock yeah. and drink. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, best just to say you drank at the famous cock, just to avoid yeah, any uh, misunderstandings. Yeah, th- those prepositions can really be a bastard sometimes, really change the meaning. Okay. And uh, remember as well, obviously cock means penis. It uh, does. There are, there are worse ways to say it, but it's still not the best way. Probably just don't talk about penises, though, in public is the best solution. Yeah, play it safe. <laughs> Play it safe. Take the easy option. Um, so another thing about the tube is the people on the tube. That everyone just goes a bit crazy because everyone's in such a rush. They have to get from A to B, obviously in a rush very fast. So there's some things that really sort of frustrate people, myself included. I don't live in London anymore. But when I did, and even when I go back, you see a tourist, for example, that can't put the ticket in the machine of the barrier. And I think I actually want to kill you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, it may be a good thing that you're not living in London anymore. (laughs) Because normally here, sometimes when I'm in Palermo, I see tourists and I have the map. I stop and I say, are you okay? Do you need some help? Um, But in London, if I see someone on the tube that can't function the barriers or something, I really think I want to kill you. And I think I should be able to kill you. And the one that definitely should um, warrant death. So when I say warrant death, I mean like deserve it, is when you're on the escalator. So the stairs that move up. 
and it says keep right and someone is standing on the left yeah that's that's infuriating when that happens <laughs> just just stand on the right walk on the left it's simple <laughs> Uh, although everyone in Italy, again, I was going to say abroad, sort of takes the piss out of us. So remember, makes fun of us um, because we follow these rules too much. But we need the rules, don't we? Rules are rules. Um, rules are... <laughs> you know, rock and roll is all well and good. But you, you, you don't have, you know, you've got to have rules. Got to have rules. Got to have rules. No, it's a nice expression there. Rock and roll is all well and good. The the meaning is quite obvious, but it's a nice a nice way to express it. Like all very poetic. Boom boom. Thanks. Yeah, I try my That's best. You. you should be a poet. Um, and another um thing that happens on the tube is when it gets very hot, people don't feel very well, and then people end up fainting. So when you faint, it's like when you see black, let's say, and you fall to the floor unconscious. And this actually happened to us when we were on the tube once. Do you remember? Um I'm not sure I actually do, Martin. <laughs> if you don't, don't worry, I will fill you in. Some rock and roll vocabulary there, fill you in. It means I will tell you, I will tell you what happened. We were living in West Hampstead at the time, very nice area, if anyone wants to know. Yep. Getting the Jubilee line to work, it was probably about June. A bit hot, and then a woman near us just fainted, hit the floor. And the most outrageous thing for me was that everyone just thought, oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake, I'm going to be late for work. <laughs> it delays everyone when that happens. Tube has to stop, get the person off. So it's it's oh, a nightmare. It's a fucking nightmare. So no one was sympathetic. So you're sympathetic. It's obviously to show sympathy. So everyone basically just thought, let's pick her up, throw her <laughs> off the train and let's keep moving. OK, because I've got a meeting in half an hour that I need to get at. Okay? Just throw her off the train. We need to get going. <laughs> just think, drink some water before you get on the tube. OK, <laughs> this is your fault. This is your responsibility. I don't care if you're pregnant or anything like that. Just don't faint when I'm on the tube. <laughs> I think we're probably discouraging people from visiting London here, but, you know, that's fine. Let's carry on. I think we're just warning them, okay, it's, it's, so they don't have any horrible surprises. Bring some water. Bring some water. Exactly. Bring, bring some water. And speaking of pregnant women, actually, there is nothing worse than sitting on the tube. You think, okay, great, I've got a seat. You see a pregnant woman. She looks at you. I say, oh, no. Oh, no. Don't make me get up. <laughs> Yeah, but I mean, the, the the really difficult thing is there is if you're you're not absolutely sure she's pregnant. Oh, that's even worse, isn't it? They, although there are people do wear these sort of sign things, don't they? Yeah, like badges. Yeah, exactly. To kind of reduce that situation happening, Transport for London now offer people badges that say uh, to, to let people know that someone's pregnant and they perhaps like to sit down instead of standing up. Oh, Transport for London just sounds like such a great company, Canon. It really is. I, I, I don't know why I left, frankly. <laughs> My technique for this, though, is I get on the tube and I don't sit near the door because the pregnant women and the old people, they always go for the first seat. So I always try to sit in the middle area because they never walk that far. And yeah. then the other, the other technique is just don't make eye contact. Keep your head down. Get your newspaper. Just head down. Don't look at anyone. Keep your seat. <laughs> Yeah, newspaper. That's the classic. I remember you telling me something once about a newspaper, which is very true. How the person sitting next to you opens the newspaper and it becomes the most interesting newspaper in the world. <laughs> you just, you have to have a look. You have to have a look. It's even more ridiculous when I'm holding the same newspaper in my hand. He's got the newspaper, the bloke sitting next to me. So the bloke, the man, and I want to read his newspaper. Yeah, what's he reading? Is he reading something more interesting than me? <laughs> Crazy. That is life on the tube, though. Um, anyway, Boom Boom, thanks a lot for sharing all your tube knowledge with thanks, us. Thanks, Martin. Always a pleasure to talk about transport in London. <laughs> Always a pleasure to listen to you talk about it. Anyway, we'll see you soon. Cheers. See you next time. See you later. OK, so that was me and Boom Boom Cannon speaking about the London underground and lots more. So let's look at some of that rock and roll vocabulary. Today, there really was 
shitloads. Um, we had keep plugging away. So if you keep plugging away, it's another way to say basically keep trying. Um, I said to Boom Boom at the beginning of the show, I kept him in the dark. If you keep someone in the dark, it means you don't tell them something. In this case, I didn't tell him what the show was about. Um, Boom Boom was talking about the stuff that Transport for London do. And he said the tube, the buses, the bikes, the trams. And I said, yes, the full Monty. So that's a funny way for when someone is listing something. And then you can basically say, yeah, that's everything. The full Monty. You do everything. Um, We had the phrasal verb stick up for someone when I said boom boom was sticking up for his old employers. That's when you defend someone. And we had the term tie you up when we're talking about torture. If you tie someone up, you lock them, let's say. I don't know. You can tie them up with just rope if you want, then torture someone. Because obviously you can't torture someone if they can move. You need to tie them up first. Although I have no experience in torturing people if you're interested. Um, We had some phrasal verbs when we said get on and get off the train and the bus as well. You get on and you get off, but you get in and you get out of the car. Okay, so just remember that. They're small prepositions, the bastards. They can be really difficult. Um, We had the term moan, which is when you complain. Um, Boom Boom also said that when he has to wait more than five minutes for a train, for the tube, sorry. He said, my blood is boiling. So that means you're very angry. We also had the term long shot when I told Boom Boom I was looking for my jacket that I lost on the tube about five years ago. And he said, hmm, that's a long shot. It means there's not much possibility of that happening. Um, We had the term cause a scene. If something causes a scene, it causes a problem and everyone looks at it. For example, if I fall over on my bike, in the street that generally causes a scene people stop the cars stop stuff like this it causes a scene it causes a bit of a problem and we also had the term good job when i said to boom boom it's a good job you're in sweden remember we've had this a few times now it means it's lucky that but it's very 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 common as you can see because it keeps coming up and we had the term boozing boozing is to drink alcohol used as a verb here We can say booze, bring booze to the party, bring alcohol. Or we can say last night I went boozing, more of like a verb there. Um, We had the term assault, again in a verb form, assaulted, which is when you are attacked verbally or physically, generally used in the passive. When we said, for example, four tube drivers were assaulted because they received the action. Obviously, if you want, you can assault someone. I don't recommend that, but it can happen. You can say to someone, last night I assaulted someone. Not recommended though, okay? We also had the term to beat someone up. If you beat someone up, it's you physically attack someone, physically injure them. So you assault them physically this time. And we had the term down when someone downed three cans of beer in a minute. So that's to drink very, very quickly. Like that. Um, We had the term warrant, which means basically deserve. And we also had the term escalator, which are like the mobile stairs, let's say, that you go up in tube stations. Um, Boom Boom also used a really nice term when he said, rock and roll is all well and good, but we need rules. That meaning is obviously quite obvious, but try to pick up on those nice terms that we use i try to highlight them for you so obviously you can take notice but really try to pick up on them for example in the podcast i didn't highlight when boom boom said if everyone abroad thinks that the transport works well in london i don't want to be the one to make them think otherwise again the meaning is quite obvious but it's a really nice poetic way to describe it let's say As I said, Boom Boom is a bit of a poet. Um, We had the term faint, which is when you are very hot. You can be hot or you don't feel well. Everything sort of goes black and you fall to the floor unconscious. That is fainting. And by the way, I was only joking in that. I wasn't actually annoyed that um, a woman fainted on the tube. Um, We also had the term fill you in so if you don't know something you can say to someone fill me in which basically means tell me tell me what i don't know um we also had the term sympathetic i gave an absolutely shit definition in the show of that is something about 
sympathy, which is true, but if you don't know what sympathy means, then that's probably going to be difficult. So sympathy is when you feel sorry for someone's misfortune, and sympathetic is the adjective of that. And last but not least, we also had the term bloke, which is another word for man. Um, all of this rock and roll English is on the website, rockandrollenglish.com. Go there, have fun, do the quiz, and remember to obviously use the vocabulary. Um, but before I go, I would just like to take one more opportunity to dedicate this show to Francisco. Thanks, everyone, for listening. I'll see you again next week. In the meantime, just keep on rocking, people. Thanks so much for listening to Rock and Roll English. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit rockandrollenglish.com and facebook.com slash rockandrollenglish. We'll catch you next time.